Welcome everybody to this week's podcast. As you can see, I am by myself this week, so we are going to have a chat. Um, just you and I. Um, I've had a lot of uh, messages sent to me requesting mafia, uh, Canadian mafia content. So I discovered a website that I want to share with you, and it's actually a really, really interesting topic. Basically, we're going to be looking at the mafia map of Canada. Um, so this website is an article and it features two uh, crime reporters and experts in mafia crimes in particular. And they are being interviewed, so they are going to talk about sort of the hot spots in Canada where the mafia either was or continues to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up our map of Canada and we are going to travel around and see exactly what's going on in each city. So the first city they mentioned is Montreal. Uh, their name is Peter and Louis, so we're going to start with Peter. He said, 385 miles from New York City and traditionally a great place to smuggle with very, very well-established groups. If you know anything about Montreal, you know about the, you know, the mob history there and also the history of the Hells Angels as well. The next expert, Louis, has to say, yeah, Montreal is one of the most important places in Canada, and not only for trade. We know that the connection between New York and Montreal is massive in terms of organized crime. Even criminals in Mexico, they know where Montreal is. And one thing that particularly facilitates operations for Latin America cartels is there's a large Spanish-speaking population in Montreal. That's interesting. I didn't actually know that. So Montreal, I think we all guessed that was going to be one of the ones on the map for sure. Um, and to this day, there's a... There's Definitely a mob presence there, amongst other gangs. So next on the list is Kingston, Ontario. And I never really thought about this when I was thinking about, okay, who is going to be on this map. I never would have thought Kingston, but Kingston has a really interesting history. Um, anyway, the first expert says... That's kind of grad school for the people who go to Millhaven or Collins Bay Correctional Institutions. There's a lot of connections made. Well, true, they do make connections inside. Millhaven's a tough place, nicknamed Thrill Haven. Collins Bay, nicknamed Gladiator School. It's a pretty tough place, but that's kind of the older guys. The next expert says about Kingston, and also now with this new wave of criminals coming to these kinds of prisons, it will be very, very interesting to see and to understand how these new dynamics and interactions between younger criminals happen while they're in jail. It's completely different than with the older guys, where one group has one area, the other has another area, and they don't mix together. This new generation, they have a new way of integration and communication, and it's going to be very, very interesting. So, yeah, there is definitely a new wave, um, younger sort of mob-style gangs, and a lot of it, of course, is white-collar crimes. Um, one of the biggest issues in Canada right now, and it's not well known to the public, is that Canada is the hotbed of the world for money laundering. And it's kind of sort of the joke of the world um, that it's so easy to launder money here. Um, so that's sort of the the new mob is dabbling in these white collar crimes. So yeah, definitely has taken a turn, and it will be interesting. Next on the list is Toronto. So the first expert says. It's got a bit of everything. There's a lot of real estate. Very true. A uh, good place to invest. 
every kind of group is there and there's something anonymous and you can live in a really expensive condo do bad things and nobody knows you're there and you have a nice reasonably quiet life so i mean very true toronto is huge you can definitely disappear there next on the list is woodbridge ontario so the first expert and he's the only one that made a comment about Woodbridge, uh, said that it's um, a very, very big place for mafia activity, um, very politically interested, very interested in real estate and business, very well dressed and kind of older. So I guess there's been a mob, a, well, I guess there's been a mob presence there for quite a long time. Next on the list is Hamilton, Ontario. So this is for sure, for sure. Um, we actually touched on Hamilton a little bit when it came to sort of the old school mob. And um, I'll just put the video up here. It's our Bessie Starkman video. Um, and we also took you to the rum running tunnels. Um, that you can see in Hamilton. They're all blocked off right now, but that is definitely the tunnels. And we have a little clip in there where we, we show you the area. So the first expert says, Hamilton is pretty rough and ready old mafia, leaning toward New York State. Some very tough guys out of the East End. And right now, really key people are gone and it's a bit up for grabs. It had a flavor of corruption for a while now. The Hamilton stories just really go deep and really far back. Even the criminals don't quite get all what's going on. But there have been some big ones. You know, Moisitano, Violi, Lupino, and Papalia, of course. You know, big, big names. And it's the closest big city to New York State. When you're heading down there, that's where you go. And, and there have been some unsolved murders that are organized crime. So Hamilton, definitely old school mafia, definitely a presence there. Um, I'm very familiar with Hamilton. Um, a lot of people say that it's the city's run by the mob. Next on the list is Burnaby, BC. Very interesting point of connections. And unfortunately, a place where several members of organized crime groups in the area have been murdered. So it doesn't sound like an ideal spot. The next expert says, and not a big mafia presence, like it's open territory for other groups that aren't mafia. So definitely there's going to be a West Coast influence there. Um, a lot of immigrants coming across the Pacific. Um, and settling in that part of Canada. So I definitely agree with that. Um, definitely a lot more going on over there aside from the mob in BC. Next on the list is Vancouver. And the first expert says, another extremely important port for entry of drugs and whatever else you want to bring to Canada or take out to other places. Sometimes it's complex how relationships between criminals work there, but I guess it's part of the size of the business. In the past, you had one group controlling the whole thing. Now they have learned how to work together somehow. For instance, in Vancouver, you have Hells Angels, you have independent soldiers, you have the Red Scorpions, you have several groups working together and sometimes fighting together. But Vancouver is very, very interesting. So it certainly is. The mafia apparently doesn't have a huge presence there. But again, it's, it's West Coast. So it's, it's definitely going to be a whole different vibe in that area. The next expert says, also Vancouver, at least in the past, was kind of a safe haven for families of drug lords from Mexico. That's pretty interesting. There was a story that I read where um, people were coming from other countries with bags full of money 
into casinos in BC, basically turning it into chips and then cashing out the chips. So they're basically washing their um, dirty money right through the casino and it's that easy. Um, so they were asked, so compared to other jurisdictions, the US, Europe, other places, Canada is worse when it comes to addressing serious big business and organized crime. And this expert says, yes, we heard the answer from a mobster who used to say that Canada is the best country in the world, complaining only for the weather. And of course, it is true, absolutely true, because there is a lower risk of detention and conviction in Canada than any other country in the world, including the United States and Europe. We have this tendency to bargaining down sentences bargain down to a lower sentence in order to avoid the cost of long trials. And that's very, very true and not only true for these sort of crimes, but many other crimes as well. For example, in Italy, when the Crown Attorney decides to accept the collaboration of an individual, it's because that individual accepted the idea of entering into the Witness Protection Program. And that's the only condition to bargaining down a sentence. So different way of dealing with it. Canada, definitely, we have some pretty strict laws um, in certain areas, but in the most important areas, not so much. And speaking of the mafia in Canada, we have an opportunity actually to see um, one of Al Capone's hideouts. It's pretty far away from where we are. Um, it's possible we might be able to take a trip there in the spring, but it's really, really interesting. And I just wanted to, um, to share it with you. It's been sitting there empty for a pretty long time. And, um, but people have visited it actually. And I will pull up a picture of it and show you. There's a few pictures of it actually. Um, pretty creepy. It's been boarded up. There doesn't appear to be an owner. And apparently under this hideout are tunnels. Now it is located around the Ottawa area. But I just thought that was really, really neat. And just because I noticed um, other urban explorers have actually taken pictures of the inside of it, which I will put up here if I can find them. Um, it's just a neat little history. Um, Al Capone, of course, is one of the bigger names in mafia history, and he definitely had a connection to Canada. Um, we touch on that a little bit in the Bessie Starkman video. Um, but most certainly he did because there was one point America was going through prohibition and Canada wasn't so much, even back then Canada was pretty lax on, um, laws of that sort, mostly because, um, they were either worried about the mafia, afraid of them, or they were basically being controlled by them, um, possibly friendly with them. So that is Al Capone's hideaway cabin. Also, there was another story here. Um, keeping with the Al Capone theme, um, a boat was found in Canada, I believe Ontario. I believe it was a floating speakeasy, if I'm not mistaken. So there is a picture. Very interesting. Prohibition era. Speakeasy boat owned by Al Capone. And it was found in Canadian waters 
I believe. Which lake was it now? And this is just a recent discovery too. It's one of the bordering lakes. It looks like might have been found in Michigan. Anyway, I'll put a bunch of pictures of it up here. It's just, it's pretty cool. Um, there was a point in time where Al Capone really relied on Canada for that alcohol. So he had his ways of getting it in and out of Canada into the States. So just a little bit of Canada's history and um, really what's going on currently with the mob in Canada. It's not the mafia, the old school mafia that you think it is. It's really much more sophisticated now. In some parts of Canada, it's getting a little bit dangerous. Um, but definitely, like I said before, Canada is sort of the, the real hotbed for the gang activity because, again, the laws are just so lax when it comes to the important stuff. Maybe it doesn't bother you. Maybe it doesn't really bother you. Um, it's really a lot about money, but also it's um, control of technology and um, there is sex trafficking involved in this dirty money. And really, they can just bring their money here and just do what they want with it, um, showing very little identification and... Um, you know, you'd figure if somebody was bringing in that kind of money into the country, they would say, you know, we need your full ID and where did you get this money? Like, what is this all about? They're turning it into properties, um, affecting the housing crisis, which is another horrible thing going on in Canada right now. So, and this is very, very real. So we're going to keep an eye on it. It's white collar crimes aren't as really exciting, um, but... It does affect everybody in the end in a big way. We should have another video coming out very, very shortly. And we will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.